الله وحده 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 لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا وحبيبنا وعظيمنا وشيخنا وإمامنا وقائدنا وقرة أعيننا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين وعلى أصحابه أجمعين ومن تبعهم بالإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى جل جلاله في القرآن المجيد والفرقان الحميد بعد أن أقول أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم تلك الرسل فضلنا بعدهم على بعد منهم من كلم الله ورفع بعدهم درجات آمنت بالله صدق الله العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين إن الله وملائكته يسلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما If all brothers and sisters can collectively recite with me اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا ومولانا محمد معدن الجود والكرم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Sending salawat, durood, salutations and blessings upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is such an action that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an inna Allah, that indeed Allah wa malaikatahu and all of his angels yusalluna ala al-nabi they send salawat upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, O believers or all those of you who have believed, Sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allah and the angels do this practice. Then Allah and the angels, Allah has ordered the same practice to be done by the believers. And the benefits of this are numerous. The virtues of salawat, if I was to speak on that, uh, that will take all of the time of the lecture. But one of the most important things we know, that man salla alayhi salatan sallallahu alayhi ashra, that a person who sends sal salawat upon the Prophet once, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He showers ten blessings upon that person. Uh, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that uh, ten of your sins are forgiven and your ranks are raised by ten times. Look at this, three huge benefits of a few seconds of your life. You say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala alih, sallallahu ala Muhammad wa ala alih, as salatu wa salamu alayka ya khair al-anam wa ala alih. In whichever way, whichever form you say salawat upon the Prophet and his family, which is the complete way of sending the root. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to the Sahaba, do not send half of the root or incomplete the root upon me. And when they inquired, what is that? He responded to them that you send salawat upon me and you do not include my family. So that's why we say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala alih. It's literally two, three seconds of your life which you are dedicating to the salawat for one salutation. And the reward is so abundant that ten of your sins are forgiven. Your ranks are raised by ten times. And... Ten mercies and blessings and favors of Allah are showered upon you. And the other benefit, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam said that on the day of judgment, inna awla nasi bi yawm al qiyamah, aktharuhum alayya salatan o kama qal, that on the day of judgment, the person who will be the closest to me, the who does not want to be close to the Prophet. Every believer wants to be close to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Sahaba, the ambition of life was to be with the Prophet And how the Sahaba were with the Prophet, that is the best example for us. When the Prophet وسلم, he asked the companion, Sal, to'ta, ask and you will be granted. The whole world was in front of him. He could have asked for dunya, he could have asked for silver, gold, the ashrafiyya dinar and dirham the golden coins, 
he could have asked for camels, he could have asked for horses, he could have asked for leadership, power or authority, he could have asked for a position within society. Literally the whole world was at his disposal. But what did the Sahabi say? Inni as'aluka murafaqataka fil jannah. That Ya Rasulullah, you have given me this opportunity to ask and you have said to me that what I ask I will be given. There is nothing I want other than this. Inni as'aluka. Ya Rasulullah, I am asking from you, murafaqataka for you, fil jannah, in jannah. Ya Rasulullah, I don't want anything else. I want from you to be with you in Jannah. Ya Rasulullah, I tujh se maang raha hu, tujh ko maang raha hu, Jannat mein maang raha hu. This is all I want. I want to be in your companionship in Jannah. And who from amongst the believers who is a true lover of Sayyiduna Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam does not want to be with the Prophet? Every single believer wants to be under the, the shade of mercy. And that mercy is the mercy of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And Allah has made him that mercy for not one world, for not one universe, but for all the entire worlds and the entire universes. Those that are known and those of the creations and species of Allah that are not known. Rasulullah is a mercy to all of them. And he sallallahu alayhi wasallam is also a mercy to animals. If you can please switch off your mobile phone Jazakallahu khaira He is also a mercy to animals Animals would make noise And the Prophet would speak to the animals And the animals would complain to the Prophet And they would say to the Prophet That our owners They are overloading us They are taking more from us than our rights What can be loaded on us You know like you have couriers People who do deliveries and you have four meter sprinters and two meter sprinters and then you have your Mercedes, uh, the big vans and every car has a certain load. If it's more than that load, you are putting the vehicle at risk, the driver at risk. It's the same with animals, donkeys, camels, horses, whatever you are used for the supplies of loading and unloading. There's an amount which they can bear. And as soon as you go more than that, you are not fulfilling the rights of the creation. And when the, when the animal was making a sound, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he inquired in regards to the owner and he said to the owner that a complaint has come to me that you are overloading your animals. Stop overloading your animals. He Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam, he was a mercy even for the animals. And he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he would go out into the neighboring, the touching areas of Mecca, the Sahabi says that we would not pass by any mountain or any tree. Look at how he is a mercy to every part of the creation. He sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, he is only changing the time of salah. It's nothing important. He is not doing any algorithm that's going to make you a millionaire. It's a, uh, just literally the changing of time. And the Imam Sahib has already told you what the time is changing to. Uh, please try to stay focused uh, so that you can benefit. This is one thing we have a problem. A child, his, uh, uh, the attentive span of a child is 15 to 20 minutes. Let's try not to be from that category. Let's try to have a, a slightly more uh, stronger focus, attentive span, inshaAllah. Allah ta'ala ham sabko ki diet ki tofi khata farmai. So the Prophet, look, uh, because of that distraction, I completely forgot what I was saying as well. This is what the issue we have with distractions. Uh, what was, yes, the Sahabi says, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he would go into the neighboring areas of Mecca we would not encounter any mountain or any tree except it would look at Rasulullah and it would say as salatu was salamu alayka ya Rasulullah it would send salutations upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam even they recognized that this is the man of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and he is the greatest Sometimes this is portrayed by speakers and lecturers and teachers that the Quran says La bayna ahadim min That from the Anbiya, the Prophets, we do not differentiate amongst any of them They are all equal Yes, they are equal In what regards? In regard to that them being chosen, it's equal, it's from Allah The primary objective of the mission, which is the mission of Tawheed That is from Allah They are equal in that but when you have an apparent contravention, on one side they are all equal, but then the Quran itself says, Tilka Rusulu, Fadalna Ba'dahum Alabaat, Minhuman Kalamallah, 
wa rafa ba'dahum jaradat ba'dahum darajat that from the messengers of Allah not the prophets the messengers the difference between a prophet and nabi and a rasul you should all know a nabi does not necessarily come with new revelation a nabi a prophet he's he's not necessarily coming with new revelation but his job is to re-emphasize and to revive the teachings of the messenger that was before him but a messenger is somebody who has come with a new message with revelation wahi and that is the four main from them which we know the suhuf of Sayyidina Ibrahim the suhuf of Sayyidina Adam ila akhirihi that's not my topic but the point is from the messengers faddalna ba'dahum ala ba'd we have made some of the messengers more superior than the others minhum man kallamallah from amongst them are those who had dialogue to speech with Allah and who is that? Musa is what is known but Imam Qurtubi says this is referring to Sayyiduna Muhammad as well as Musa in his tafsir al-Qurtubi and he says Musa is that one who spoke to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without any form of vision Bagar dekhe baat he is Musa but on the night of Mi'raj Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam he spoke to Allah in a way which was with vision how it was it's between him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he says Imam Qurtabi the point he mentioned is that if you speak to Allah without physically seeing and you are Kalimullah then surely with seeing you are also Kalimullah and if Musa is Kalimullah Sayyidina Muhammad also is Kalimullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam wa rafa'a ba'dahum darajat and from them the messengers we have raised some of their ranks and we know that the greatest rank the ulul azam the five mighty giants and from them sayyiduna ibrahim and the leader of all of them is none other than sayyiduna muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam so my brothers and sisters in these gatherings which we have and in any gathering do not let a moment of your life go to waste a companion came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam and he said, Ya Rasulullah, what should I do in my spare time? What he meant by that is, after the fara'id have come to an end, you have completed your obligations. Always remember, when we are giving the lessons and the durus on Sayyiduna Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, it's important to remember that he is the one who has taught us our obligations. He is the one who said to us, Sallu kama ra'aytumuni, read salah, as you see me, read my salah. So we know that all of the commands which have come to us, the commands are from Allah, without a doubt. The fara'id, our salah, fasting in the month of Ramadan, paying zakah, the commands are within the Quran from Allah. But how have they reached us? Through Sayyiduna Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Even the recognition of Allah, the ma'rifah, the recognition of Allah, this has reached us through Sayyiduna Rasulullah. The Quran has reached us through Sayyiduna Rasulullah. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. So the point which I am making is, is that nobody should be under the concept or uh, under this understanding that you can avoid doing those things which are necessary and you can go and start following a path which is of secondary optional worship and think that you will reach the highest levels of wilaya or the highest levels of tazkiyah and the highest levels of tasawwuf. You know, this is very, very important to understand. A person does not read his five daily salahs and he reads salawat ala nabi and he thinks he will find the highest maqam of wilaya. Wilaya begins with the obligations. The first step to wilaya is to complete your obligations, your fara'id. If the obligations are not completed, there's nothing for you. And this is very, very important to understand. Uh, please, uh, I am a person of tasawwuf and tazkiyah. The Prophet came for tazkiyah. The Prophet came to purify us. The asbab, which have been written on tazkiyah and how we... Tazkiyah means purification, self-purification. It doesn't mean anything crazy. Don't look worried. Tazkiyah is come from the word zakah. And the zakat is also a purifier. The zakat which you pay is from the same word, which means to purify. What does the zakat do which you give in the way of Allah? It purifies the wealth which you have remaining. And those who do not give the zakat, what happens to the rest of the wealth? It becomes impure. And ask the people who have not paid the zakat. Money comes and money goes, there is no barakah within that money. And those who pay the zakat, small amounts of money comes, 
the benefits are great. The Prophet came to purify us. This tazkiyah purification is one of the three objectives of Rasulullah. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. My brothers and sisters, always remember this that we only worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Worship is for Allah. And after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the creation, this is the biggest differentiator between Tawheed and Kufr and Shirk. Allah is Khalid, the creator, and everything including the prophets, they are from the makhluk. We are from the creation. Allah has no beginning and He has no end. Everything else it has a beginning, it will have an end. Everything else is limited. The knowledge, the sight, the vision, the power of Allah is unlimited. Everything which the makhluk has, the creation, it is given. And what Allah has is that. Whatever has been given to the creation has been given to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What has been given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, it's not given, it's zati. And remember my brothers and sisters, that after completing your obligations, can I please request those brothers, excuse me, brothers at the back, those brothers that are standing up, if you have something urgent to speak about, come and inform me as well, I need to be informed. And if not, sit down silently. Jazakallah. Uh, and you are not showing respect to me by doing this. All of you, please don't take this in a bad way and think that the Imam Sahib is getting wound up because his lecture is getting disturbed. Uh, the words are the words of the Quran. The words are the words of Rasulullah. The masjid is the house of Allah. It's a respect you should have for the house of Allah. And if a person does not have the respect for the house of Allah, then what will he have respect for in the dunya? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to respect you know the sha'air Allah, the signs of Allah, the symbols of Allah. When you show you adim, ta'zim, respect and honor, reverence, you give it to those things, that's when you will have taqwa al the taqwa of the heart. Reading salah will not give you taqwa of the heart. Respecting the symbols of salah, respecting all of the signs of Allah, that is what will give you the taqwa of the heart. And that's what we are all searching for, right? The taqwa of the heart. The God-consciousness. The God-fearingness of the heart. And where does that come from? He who shows respect. Respect to what? Sha'air Allah. The signs and the symbols of Allah. فَإِنَّهَا مِنْ تَقْوَ الْقُلُوبِ It's from the taqwa of the heart. Allah grant us that taqwa. Yesterday we started and we spoke about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and some of his beauty. How he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was not the tallest, he was not the shortest, he was of medium stature. But whichever gathering he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was in, he always seemed the highest. Those who were younger than him in age or older than him in age, they always referred to him as the senior. He Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was that person he was like the complete full moon the sahaba say when you see the complete darkness in the skies and this complete night everywhere is night and you have the full moon we did not see anything like the prophet before him nor have we seen anything like as beautiful as the prophet after him he was like the full moon and we know that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on one night the Sahabi says that on one side was the moon and on one side was the face of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and I looked at the moon and I looked at the Prophet and I started a comparison within my own mind to see what is more beautiful where is more light emanating from and he said فَإِذَنْ and then هُوَ أَحْسَنُ مِنَ الْقَمَرِ I came to the conclusion that the light of Rasulullah it is over dominant that even the moon is getting the light from the face of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and you all know the story of Umm Ma'bad time does not give me permission to go into the full 
uh, story in regards to the lecture or, or the whole uh, situation during the migration. Umm Ma'bad. But just to summarize one of her phrases, she says that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he is that man. Ajmal nas min ba'idin wa ahsanuhum wa ahsanuhum min qarib. That if you look at the Prophet from far, he is the greatest. He is the most beautiful. And when he comes closer, he is even more beautiful. There is nothing like Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam. You find examples of the Sahaba that they would queue up in lines. And when the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he would do wudu, they would not let the musta'malul ma. According to the Hanafi school, the musta'malul ma is pure. It's pure, but it's not a purifier. Musta'malul ma means used water. Musta'mal comes from the word istimal. Musta'mal means that water which has been used. For example, the tap is open, I wash my face. That water which is dripping off my face, it is pure, but it's not a purifier. I.e., if a person wants to do wudu, he cannot do it with that water. Does that make sense? And that's why if you look at the Hanafi works and the teaching of the Hanafi faith when it comes to ghusl in particular, what do they say? That you wash every part of your body, every limb, the whole body three times, but you leave your feet till the end. Generally what happens, whether if it's a bathing tub or even if it's a shower tray or whatever, all of the used water goes to the floor. Yes, it's touched your feet. It's pure, it's not impure, but it's not a purifier. That's why when you leave the bathroom, the last thing you do is you wash your feet. Does that make sense? That water which is pure, but it's not a purifier. The Sahaba would gather together and when the Prophet would make wudu, they would not let the drops of that water touch the floor. Rather, they would put their hands underneath it and they would rub it over their bodies. This is the love and respect which they had for Sayyiduna Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam. And we spoke yesterday about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Khatmun Nabuwa. How he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he had a seal of prophethood behind in between of his two shoulders and you all know the example of Salman al-Farisi radiallahu an and how from uh, being from a fire worshipping background in Persia how he ended up in Medina and how he was shown signs uh, and three signs were given to him that these three signs you will see in the man who is awaited for what does this show us that even if you look at the Judaic scriptures of the past or even the biblical scriptures, the arrival of the Prophet وسلم, was categorically mentioned to them. Mubashiran bi Rasulin Yati min ba'dismuhu Ahmad. The glad tidings and the news was given to them of the man who will come thereafter, who is known by the name of Ahmad in the heavens and Muhammad on the earth. And that's our messenger, our noble messenger. Our noble Prophet, Sayyiduna Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Now there are various pictures you see and various uh, artifacts, uh, drawings, and sometimes you see wall hangings uh, of the Khatm al the sign of the Prophethood. So people often think that this is what it is. Um, I'm not speaking about the permissibility of whether these wall hangings and these drawings are allowed or not. That's not the topic. What I want to mention is I want to share with you what the actual Khatm al was. From the hadith. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, we find that he Sa'al to Aba Sa'id al-Khudri, who says this? Abu Nadra al-Awaqi. He's a companion and he says, Sa'al to Aba Sa'id al-Khudri. And this is from the Jalil al-Qadr Sahaba, one of the mighty Sahaba. Abu Sa'id al-Khudri. And Khatami Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I asked the Prophet about the sign of prophethood. Ya'ni Khatamu al-Nabuwa. Faqala he says that the Prophet وسلم, between his two shoulders it was slightly raised morsel of flesh on his blessed upper back. So the back, if you split it into three sections, at the upper back between the two shoulders and the shoulder plates, in the middle of that, there was a sign and it was like a piece of extra flesh, a morsel of flesh. And in the other narration we find that on the outside of it there was some hair. Like the horse has hair, uh, has hair on its head. Uh, this is the words of the other narration. It's like there was hair around that and it was the sign of prophethood, the seal of prophethood that was given to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the Sahaba from amongst them, there were those Sahaba who would ask the Prophet just to see that. And others would run at the chance to kiss that. Uh, and uh, I mentioned uh, 
during the Battle of Badr, uh, for those of you who were here and you can remember that all the Sahaba wanted was closeness to the Prophet. They wanted to be within the vision of the Prophet. They wanted to benefit from all the blessings that came from him. That the Sahabi, when the Prophet وسلم, he poked him and he said to him, get straight into the line. He spoke to him and what did he say to him? Get straight into the line. You are out of the stuff. And you know when we say to the people, uh, uh, Complete your rows. Allah. Allah have mercy on you. You do not find any prayer of the Prophet وسلم, in which he did not emphasize the importance of completing the rows. To such an extent, it's this completing the sufuf which brings unity, ittifaq and ittihad within the ummah. And when we say to the children that they should be at the side and the women should be at the back or in uh, separate places, this is in full following of the sunnah of Rasulullah. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the children to the side, the tight, uh, safuf tight and close together. That man, that sahabi, he says, Ya Rasulullah, you have hurt me. You have poked me. Whether it was with an arrow or a stick, there are two narrations. And he says, Ya Rasulullah, I want revenge. It's us. I want to seek revenge. Now imagine this for a moment. A thousand men standing in front of you for a battle. And from your own camp, a man says to the leader of the own camp, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I want revenge from you. The Sahaba are looking around. Uh, what's this man saying? Kisas, revenge, and even that from the Prophet Muhammad? And not even that, when is he asking for it? At the time of battle, when you look forward, all you see is death or martyrdom. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says to him, take revenge. And he says, Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when you poked me, there was no cloth on my stomach. Meaning, I had no, nothing on my stomach, I was uncovered. My stomach was open, exposed. You have a kamis, you have a cloth on your stomach. So remove it. Then I can truly take my revenge. The Sahaba became even more worried. This man seeking revenge from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he lifts his cloth or he removes it. The Sahabi, he runs at the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he hugs the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he kisses the blessed stomach of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he says, Ya Rasulullah, what revenge can I take from you? When I look forward, all I can see is death. I can see martyrdom. And before I leave this dunya, the only thing I wanted was that the last thing my body touches is the body of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This was the Iman. This was the Mahabba. This was the hope. This was the mawadda that the Sahaba had for Sayyiduna Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam. My brothers and sisters, we mentioned some of this yesterday, but I will reiterate from Anas bin Malik. He says, Kana sha'ru Rasulillahi ila nisfi uzunayhi. In one narration, we find that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his hair, it was between his ears, the middle of his ears. This is one of the lengths that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he grew his hair to. This question is often asked, was all of the hair of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam equal? Uh, and when youngsters are speaking amongst themselves with various levels of fading and different hairstyles, uh, you know, all the hair has to be equal. Ila akhirihi. And I think sometimes we say illogical things without thinking. The hair would go and it would reach the earlobes and anything which, uh, middle of the ear, and anything which was thereafter, it would be cut off. But does that mean all of the hair is equal? Absolutely not. Ask yourself this question, a hair which comes from here and is going all the way back to there and a hair which comes out from here and it goes to there, is that equal in length? I'm asking you all a question. It's quite clear as day, like the answer is no. Does that make sense? Uh, do, are you understanding what I'm saying? Uh, your reaction says otherwise. So it's not about it being equal, it's about following the prophet, uh, the prophetic sunnah in regards to what his uh, method of approach was. One of the hairs, the lengths of hair which he grew was between his ears. It would go back to between his ears and anything thereafter, it was removed. And one we know to the ear lobes. And then the third hair was not touching the shoulders, but just above the shoulders. These were the three different lengths 
that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, and we have the narration from uh, Hisham bin Urwa from his father, from Aisha radiyallahu taala anha. كنت أغتسل أنا ورسول الله من إناء واكل وكان له الشعر فوق الجمة ودون الوفرة. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم his blessed hair was above his shoulders yet it was past his earlobes. So between the two. And this was the beautiful hair of the Prophet. And what did we say yesterday? His hair was not straight and his hair was not curly, but his hair was wavy ever so slightly. And we know that uh, from those people who would cut the hair of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, some of the hairs would be kept by the Sahaba, and most obvious of them, which we find within the Sira, is Khalid bin Walid. Uh, he would keep the hair of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam under his helmet when he would go to the battlefield, and then he made his name, Khalid bin Walid. Before Islam, uh, we saw, but after Islam, his contributions to the spread of Islam, his contributions. Uh, on the battlefield of Islam, they are second to none. And he then, sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, from every aspect of his life which we look at, the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, he would, ble- uh, he would comb his blessed hair and beard. The Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, never left his hair and his beard in a scruffy manner. And in one narration, the Prophet said, فَأَحْسِلُهَا uh, Beautify your beards. Your beards which you have, make them beautiful. Look after them. So you are not looking scruffy. Uh, if a, the physical appearance, even though Allah does not look at the physical appearance, that does not mean we do not give any uh, focus or attention to it. The reshi ka ya alam nahi ke do do teen teen saal admi wo kangi na pere. Aisi koi baat nahi hai. Even though Allah subhanahu wa taala, He does not look in Allah taala la yanguru ila suwari kum. Allah does not look at your uh, physical appearance. But the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He was an example and he was a leader and for him to unite and speak and to be approachable within society, he had to be presentable. And there were two qualities I mentioned yesterday that every prophet had. Does anybody remember what they were? Two things that every prophet had and our prophet is the greatest in both of them. Does anybody remember? Uh, Yes, one and? uh, Sorry? No, no, no. Beautiful voice, mashallah. We have some brothers who are listening, alhamdulillah. Ma ba'asallahu nabiyyan illa husnal waj wa husnal sawt. No prophet has been sent except he had the most beautiful of faces. Wa husnal sawt. And his voice was also attractive. Uh, some people in their voice they have uh, an awe, a, a, a command, and Whilst others on the battlefield, they are commanding people with the sword. The men of Allah, they command the hearts of the people with their voice. Allah has not sent any Nabi except that he has the best of faces and the best of voices. From all of the prophets that had beautiful faces and beautiful voices, I, Muhammad, has the best of faces, I have the best of voices. Sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would comb his blessed hair. To what extent? He would not only comb it, he would oil it, and then he would take precaution to make sure that the oil does not drip onto his clothes as well. Uh, it comes within the narration from Anas bin Malik. Kana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yuksiru dahna ra'si. He would frequently apply oil to his blessed head. Wa tasriha lihiyatih. And he would comb his blessed beard. And then, wa yuksiru qina'a hatta ka'anna sobahu thobu zayat. Zayat. He would then, a cloth known by the name of qina'a, he would place that on his head. Uh, what was the purpose of that? So that the oil does not uh, come onto any of the other clothes. This was before he would uh, wear on his imama the turban. And inshallah we will have some narrations in regards to what his turban was like as well. In regards to the white hairs of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we spoke about them uh, yesterday as well. Anas bin Malik he narrates, مَا عَدَدْتُ فِي رَأْسِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ sallallahu alayhi wa sallam وَلِحْيَتِهِ إِلَّا أَرْبَعَةَ أَرْبَعَةَ عشرة شعرة بيضاء. 
that from the head and the beard of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam, he says, Anas bin Malik, I did not count more than 14 white hairs. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam in regards to other things such as the kohal he would wear within his eyes, we know that as well, that would boost um, his eyesight and the growth of the eyelashes. It mentioned uh, by Ibn Abbas, Radiallahu an an nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qal iktahilu bil ithmidi fa innahu yajlu al basar wa yumbitu al sha'ar wa za'ama an an nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kanat lahu mukhulatun yaktahilu minha kulla layla salasatan fi hadihi wa salasatan fi hadihi Ibn Abbas radiallahu an he says that the Prophet he would uh, use this kohul it strengthens the eyesight and it boosts the growth of the eyelashes and he, Ibn Abbas, said that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he would have a kohal container, which you often, when you go to Mecca and Medina, you find these small little silver or golden containers with a slight little uh, pointy uh, pencil within it, with the kohal is used. This is to imitate what he, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the container he had, from uh, which each night he would place the kohal in his eyes, three in one and three in that, i.e. both of the eyes. And we know that whenever the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would start any practice, which side would he start with? Whenever the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, he would wear anything on, uh, whether it be his khida, uh, whether it be his cloak, uh, or whatever practice he would start, it would always be from the right. Ashabul Maimani. He would start with the Bismillah and the right side. Uh, this is very important to remember. Other than this, uh, it continues. Like I said to you, there are over 415 narrations in this book. Uh, five days by no means and one hour or 45 minutes of them with constant interruptions of mobile phones and people talking as well, which minuses the time even further, do not give us the platform to finish all of them. So I'm selecting some of the ahadith. By no means am I saying that I am giving the full representation of the Shama'il. Please do not be under this understanding. That would take a lot of time, a lot of explanation. Some of the various things from the life of the Prophet I am mentioning, so that you people can fall in love with something from the Prophet. Sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. We find that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam in regards to the turban which he would wear, uh, the Imama. It's mentioned by Abu Zubair who narrates from Jabir, he says, Dakhala Nabiyu Makkata Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam. That the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he entered Mecca, Yawm al on the day of the opening, the conquest of Mecca, from the city in which the Muslims were once driven out, drove out, and they did not live, let the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam live in that city or preach the religion of Islam, that city which Allah has taken out by in the Quran, La uqsimu bihadal balad wa anta hillum bihadal balad. That pure city, uh, when Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, He has said to the Prophet, I have given you in abundance. From them, one of them is the opening, the Yawm al What does that mean? Uh, that the very same vicinity and area in which the Muslims were not allowed to preach or practice their religion due to which they had to go to Medina now they come back as a dominant force but even then when the leaders of Kuffar and the many in terms of percentage from them were fearing for, them, for their lives for all of the injustices which they have committed from persecution to physical torture, to uh, insulting and abuse, mental pressures, uh, financial capturing of the various belongings of the believers, and they were fearing for their life. And every single person was fearing for their life. Even on that day, the Prophet showed his mercy. And what did he say to them? La tasriba alaykum al yom. La tasriba alaykum al yom. You have nothing to worry about today. I don't want any revenge from you. You have nothing to worry about today. And then we see many of them accepting Islam. That day, when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, he entered Mecca. دَاخَلَ النَّبِيُّ مَكَّةَ يَوْمَ الْفَتْخِ صلى الله عليه وسلم وَعَلَيْهِ عِمَامَةٌ سَوْدَاءٌ On that day, 
the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he was wearing a black turban on his head, a black turban on his head. What did what does this show us? MashaAllah, we have a brother here wearing the black turban on his head as well, following the sunnah. What does this show us? This shows us that what you attach colors to means nothing. This color belongs to this person. That color belongs to that person. This color belongs to that person. Sibagat uh, Allah. The colors which we have, anything which is attached to Rasulullah, it's a sunnah for us to wear. That's the point I'm making. Ra'aytu ala ra'si Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam imamatan sawda. Another sahabi, Ja'far bin Amr bin Khurais, from his father and Abi, he says, I saw that on the head of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was a black turban. Other than that, we have various narrations from even Ibn Umar radiallahu an, uh, which is very uh, unique and important to understand. He says, <coughs> from Harun ibn Ishaq al-Hamdani, from Yahya bin Muhammad al-Madini, from Abdul Aziz ibn Muhammad, from Ubaidullah ibn Umar, and from Nafi, from Ibn Umar. He says, كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا تم سدل إمامته بين كتفي قال نافع وكان ابن أمر يفعل ذلك قال أبيد الله ورأيت القاسم ابن محمد وسالما يفعلان ذلك when the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he would tie his turban uh, the end part of it he would tie that he would allow it to hang uh, the tail of it you can say the tail of the turban the ending between his two shoulders so you often see that when the turban is worn uh, the sunnah method of the turban that it goes around. The ulama have uh, bahas on this as well. How many times is the minimum that the turban should go around? And is the one tail it should have or two tails? Uh, these are all discussions about what we have uh, read in this hadith, that the tail of the turban, uh, the shoulders of the Prophet, the tail would hang uh, below there, the ending of it. As many of the brothers who wear the turban, you have seen this, uh, that the tail, the ending of it, it hangs between the two shoulders. And then, Nafi says that I saw Ibn Umar, the son of Sayyiduna Umar, radiallahu an, and he would also wear the turban in the very same way. Other than this, my brothers and sisters, we find how the Prophet would walk. Uh, I'll share one hadith from here and then a few from his virtues and miracles before we uh, conclude. It's mentioned from Abu Huraira. He says, Ma ra'aytu shay'an. Abu Huraira says, Ma ra'aytu shay'an. Ahsana min Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Look at his choice of words. You know, everybody sees with a different lens. Every person sees with a different lens. Something which you may look at, maybe of beauty to you and to others, not as so much. Even the Sahaba, when they would look at the Prophet, how they would express the attachment and love to the Prophet, it was different from person to person. Over the past two days, what we have learned is that Sahaba said that the Prophet, he was, he was like a page from the Quran. He was like a page from the Quran. We have heard he was like the Quran. We have heard that his conduct was like the Quran. We have heard he was the living Quran, the physical embodiment of the Quran, Yamshi Bain al Nas, walking amongst the people. We have also learned uh, that his, he was like the full moon. Uh, but look at how uh, uh, Abu Huraira radiallahu an, how he describes the Prophet to us. What does he say? That, مَا رَأَيْتُ شَيْئًا أَحْسَنَ مِنْ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ كَأَنَّ الشَّمْسَ تَجْرِي فِي وَجْهِهِ Abu Huraira said that I have not seen anything more beautiful than the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam And then what does he say? كَأَنَّ الشَّمْسِ تَجْرِي فِي وَجْهِهِ It was as though that the sun is flowing from his blessed face The sun, 93 million miles away from us Look at the sun for one, two, three seconds directly It's impossible But what does he say? كَأَنَّ الشَّمْسَ تَجْرِي فِي وَجْهِهِ it's as though the sun flowed from his blessed face. And then what does he say? وَلَا رَأَيْتُ أَحَدًا أَسْرَأَ فِي مَشْيَتِهِ مِنْ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم 
I did not see anybody who walked faster than the Prophet Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Ka'annam al ardu tutuwa lahu. He says that when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would walk, it was as though the earth would fold itself up for the arrival of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Abu Huraira is saying this. Then what does he say? Inna la nujhidu anfusana wa inna hu la ghayru muqtarisin. That we would try to do the same and walk at the same speed of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We would have to really exert ourselves to do this. But when the Prophet would do it, for him it was effortless. And we know that the Sahaba are not like the Prophet. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we learn this from the other hadith, the other narration, in which we find that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he saw the Sahaba and they had become weak. And he says to them, what is it? We see, I see you and you are weak. And they say, Ya Rasulullah, we have seen you, that you are fasting during the day and you are doing Qiyam during the night, so we started to do the same. So we started to do the same. We saw you, Ya Rasulullah, you are fasting consecutively during the days, and during the nights you are worshipping long Qiyamul Layl, long nights, to the extent the Sahaba mentioned that the feet of the Prophet would become swollen. You are fasting during the days, and Qiyam during the night, so what did we do? We started to copy you, Ya Rasulullah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, I am the messenger of Allah. Allah, He feeds me and Allah, He looks after me. You are not equal to me. Look at this. Is this not a lesson for all of us? We ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to allow us to understand that the teachings of Sayyiduna Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wa Sallam There are some other narrations I wanted to share If uh, you are okay, shall we continue? Uh, I should be the one who is tired But I am asking you if you are tired I should be the tired one uh, I've been speaking for almost an hour But is it okay to continue? Jazakallahu khairan Qala Ja'al Abbas One day the Abbas came Ila Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam فَكَأَنَّهُ سَمِئَ شَيْئًا for he seemed to have heard something indecent from the disbelievers and he was in a rage, he was in anger فَقَامَ النَّبِيُّ عَلَى الْمِنْبَرِ he came to the Prophet, he surely informed the Prophet of what he had heard so the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he stood on the minbar, the pulpit فَقَالَ and he said to the people مَنْ أَنَا who am I the Prophet is asking the Sahaba, Who am I? Qalu, they said, Anta Rasulullah. You are the Messenger of Allah. Alayka salam. Peace be upon you, O Messenger of Allah. <laughs> then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, he said the following. Qal, Ana Muhammad ibn Abdullah ibn Abdul Muttalib. I am Muhammad, the son of Abdullah, the son of Abdul Muttalib. Then he says, Inna Allah khalaqa al-khalqa. Allah created the creation فَجَعَلَنِي فِي خَيْرِهِمْ فِرَقَدًا After he created the creation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He divided them into segments and He made me from the best of them. سُمَّ جَعَلَهُمْ فِرَقَتَيْنِ فَجَعَلَنِي فِي خَيْرِهِمْ فِرَقَدًا Then there were two segments of them, the Arabs and the non, and He made me from the best of them. ثُمَّ جَعَلَهُمْ قَبَائِلِ Then He made from them tribes فَجَعَلَنِي فِي خَيْرِهِمْ قَبِيلَةً He made me from the best of tribes. ثُمَّ جَعَلَهُمْ بُيُوتًا Then he made for them houses فَجَعَلَنِي فِي خَيْرِهِمْ بَيْتَ He made me from the best of houses وَخَيْرِهِمْ نَسَبًا And he said that my personal progeny is the best of progenies. The family of Rasulullah, there is no equation to the family of Rasulullah. صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم And there are various examples that show us this from even the Sahaba's time. Sayyiduna Umar radiallahu an in which we find that those people who participated within Badr they were given a certain amount of wealth from Malul Ghanima uh, what we call in English the booty so when a fight takes place all of the wealth which is accumulated from the shields and the armor and the swords 
ila akhirihi anything else which is also captured that is known as malul ghanima uh, and this malul ghanima was not something which was a halal for the previous nations uhillat li al ghanai the prophet said from the five things fuddiltu ala al anbiya bi sittin wa u'titu khamsun lam yu'tahunna ahadun min al anbiya min qabli the five things or the six things which were given to the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam from them one of them he said uhillat li al ghanaim that the malul ghanima this wealth has been made halal for me and my ummah which clearly shows us then it's something which was not halal for the ummah ashar man qablana the sharia of the past prophets the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam this wealth which was made halal for his nation what do we find that in one battle sayyiduna umar when he was distributing the wealth what did he do the people who participated within badr they were more experienced right because badr was the first war the first battle and those who were more experienced they were more deserving and when sayyiduna umar he gave the wealth to those who participated within badr he gave the same amount of wealth to sayyiduna hasan and sayyiduna husain radiyallahu anhuma wa alayhi wasallam the same amount of wealth and sayyiduna abdullah ibn umar he comes and he says oh father you have given them the wealth of those who participated within badr even though they didn't why have i not received the same amount why have i not received the same amount who is saying this abdullah the son of umar sayyiduna umar ibn al khattab radiyallahu anhu imam zahabi has narrated this in his siyar alam nubala and what do sayyiduna umar reply to him fa'ti bi abinka abihima wa umminka ummihima wa jaddin ka jaddihima wa jaddatin ka jaddatihima wa khalin ka khalihima wa khalatin ka khalatihima wa ammin ka ammihima wa ammatin ka ammatihima sayyiduna umar is saying to his son you are asking me to give you the same amount of wealth which i have given to hasan and husain before i give you the same amount of wealth you need to bring to me a father like the father of hasan and husain you need to bring to me a mother like the mother of hasan and husain you need to bring to me a grandfather like the grandfather of hasan and husain you need to bring to me a grandmother like the grandmother of hasan and husain and then say yuduna umar himself he says and the words are as for the grandfather he is sayyidun rasulullah he is sayyiduna muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and there is no one like him as for the grandmother she is khadija al kubra there is no one like her as for the father he is ali as for his mother the afat she is fatima you are asking for the same level of wealth as them but before i give you the same level of wealth as that you need to bring me a mother like their mother a father like their father a grandfather like their father and the hadith is long and it goes on a paternal uncle like their paternal uncle a paternal aunt like their paternal aunt a maternal uncle a maternal auntie like their maternal aunt and um, uh, auntie my brothers and sisters sayyiduna rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he was given al kawthar inna a'tayna al kawthar from that one of them is the family of rasulullah and look at this how it is allah works in mysterious ways the sons pass away the people say abtar your mission has come to an end your progeny has come unto an end but the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam what did he say about hasan and husain he said ana abuhuma wa asabatuhuma i am their father and my lineage will go through hasan and husain until the end of times when injustice prevails on this ummah it will be from the offspring of hasan and husain sayyiduna hasan rather that sayyiduna imam mahdi who is known khalifa allah ala al itlaq he will come and then all the injustice which is taking place he will remove that and this is from the end of times insha allah if we have time in the future uh, we will have some lectures on uh, the major and the minor signs of qiyam alamatu saa this is known as the signs of the hour but my brothers and sisters the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam his virtues go on time can come to an end we cannot do justice i finish with this final hadith that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam he says wa 
وعن ابن عباس عبد الله بن عباس رضي الله عنهما جسد جلس ناس من أصحاب رسول الله ينتظرون that the Sahaba were sat down and they were waiting for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam you know when we stand up and some emphasis is given for between hayya ala salah and hayya ala salah that's when we stand up for the iqama uh, this is because this was the practice of the sahaba for those of you who have been to madina tul munawwara ma bayna bayti wa minbari rawdatun min riyad al jannah what is from my house to the my pulpit is a garden from the gardens of paradise ma bayna bayti wa minbari the prophet sallallahu alayhi وسلم, what would he do when he would come out of his hujra, his room the sahaba would stand up and that time would be between hayya ala salah and hayya ala salah and that's when they would stand up and they would complete the robes and this is an often uh, seen practice of the sahaba that they would yantar yiruna they would sit together and they would wait for the arrival of the prophet and this is what uh, ibn abbas is saying here that nasun jalasa nasun people were sat من أصحاب رسول الله، from the messenger of Rasulullah، the Sahaba ينتظرون، they were waiting for him. فخرج حتى إذا دنا منهم سمعهم يتذكرون. the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم when he came out، some of them were having conversation between themselves، and what is it that they were saying in the conversations is as follows. فقال بعضهم، and what some of them said، عجبا. how amazing is it؟ إن الله تعزى من خلقه خليلا that Allah has made from His creation a خليل a blossom friend a close friend an intimate friend اتعزى إبراهيم خليلا He has made Ibrahim as His خليل وقال آخر and others said ماذا بأجب من كلام موسى and how what is more amazing than the discourse the conversation of سيدنا موسى كلمه تكليما he spoke to him directly وقال آخر Ada said, "Fa Isa kalimatullah waruhu." That Isa, Jesus, is the word of Allah. Waruhu. Wa kala akhir. Ada said, "Adam istafahu Allah." He was chosen by Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Fa kharaja alaihim as salam. Fa salama. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wa sallam. He presented salam to them. He greeted them. He presented salutations, salam to them. And then he says to them, "Qad sami'tu kalamakum." Indeed, I have heard your conversation about Khalil and Kalim and Safi and Ruh and he who was chosen by Allah. Then the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam said, "Wa ajabakum and it amazed you that Ibrahim is Khalilullah, wa huwa kazalik, wa Musa najiyullah, wa huwa kazalik, wa Isa." روح الله وكلمته هو هو كذلك وآدم مصطفى الله هو هو كذلك على the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said that all of these things have amazed you وأنا حبيب الله does it not amaze you that I am the most beloved of Allah سبحانه وتعالى ولا فخر and I have no فخر on this I don't boast then the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said وأنا حامل لواء الحمد يوم القيامة on the day of judgment, I will be the flag bearer. I will be the one who will be the bearer of the banner of praise. And he then said, Wala fakhra. Wa ana awwalu shafi'in, I will be the first who intercedes on the day of judgment. Wa ana awwalu mushaffa'in yawm al qiyamah, wala fakhra. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam said, Wa ana awwalu man yuharriku khilaq al jannah, fa yaftahu Allahu li. فَيُدْخِلُونِيهَا وَمَأِيَ فُقَرَاءُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَلَا فَخْرَ The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam said I will be the first one to knock on the chain of paradise and Allah will open the gates of Jannah for me and I will be the first who enters Jannah and with me will be a group of the believers who are destitute Here, Faqir, Fuqara, Faqr There are three words Faqir, the plural Fuqara and Faqr, the master uh, this requires a lot of time to explain what is Fakiri, what is Fakr, who are the Fuqara? Uh, is it physically the poor people who have no money to their name? Uh, or is it something different? That's a different discussion. Then the Prophet said, Wa ana akramul awalina wal akhirina wala fahra. The Prophet 
I am the most noblest of all the people from the first and even the end. Wala fakhra, and I have no fakhr on this. My brothers and sisters, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his mercy and blessings upon us through the blessings and the light of Sayyiduna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya Allah, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, we ask you that you forgive our major and minor sins. Ya Allah, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, we ask you that you allow us to connect to the Prophet Muhammad in the dunya and allow us to be him within the akhirah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. O Allah, we ask you that on the day of judgment, you grant us the companionship and closeness to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and you allow us to be with him. And O Allah, we ask you that you allow us to love him the way he ought to be loved. And O Allah, we ask you that you allow us to understand him how he ought to be understood. And O Allah, we, allow, we ask you that you allow, to, uh, allow us to be obedient to him the way he ought to be obeyed. And O Allah, we ask you that you allow us to spread his teachings the way in his teachings ought to be spread. And O oh Allah, we ask you that you allow us and our children and our families and our generations to come. O oh Allah, instill within our hearts the pure form of love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And O oh Allah, we ask you that you protect our iman. And O oh Allah, we ask you that you protect the iman of our generations to come. And O oh Allah, we ask you that you make us from those people who will be with the Prophet in Jannah. This was the dua of the Sahaba. As'aluka murafaqataka fil jannah. O oh Allah, allow us to be within the companionship, the close proximity to the Prophet in Jannah. And O oh Allah, we ask you that it's the month of Ramadan. We are approaching the time of iftar, the time when duas are accepted. O oh Allah, all the brothers that are sat here, all the sisters that are sat upstairs and are listening, all of the people who are listening to this through the live stream. And those who are not even listening, the whole Ummah of the Prophet, we make dua for all the Ummah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those that have left this world in the state of Iman, O oh Allah, grant them a high rank in Jannah to fear those. And O oh Allah, those that are suffering from any forms of difficulties or any forms of uh, medical or spiritual illnesses, we are all suffering from some illness, O oh Allah, purify our zahir and purify our batin. O oh Allah, purify our external and purify our internal. O oh Allah, remove all the difficulties from our hearts. O oh Allah, protect our hearts. O oh Allah, protect our minds. O oh Allah, protect our limbs. And O oh Allah, grant us nur. O oh Allah, grant us the nur of the Quran. O oh Allah, grant us nur of the religion. O oh Allah, grant us the nur of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. O oh Allah, those brothers and sisters that have any requests or any dua, they are sat here, they have their hands raised to you. O oh Allah, we have nobody to turn to. I will stop for 10 seconds and every person just lower your heads and any difficulties you are going to present it to Allah. He is Alimun Bizat al Sudur. Oh Allah, you are the knower of the state of our affairs. All of the brothers that are here, whatever difficulty they have, which is in accordance with the Sharia, oh Allah, remove the difficulties. Oh Allah, whichever du'as they have, oh Allah, accept the du'as. Oh Allah, we ask you that you protect us from the hypocrisy of the hypocrites. O oh Allah, we ask you that you protect us from the magic of the magicians. And O oh Allah, we ask you that you protect us from the evil eye of the evil people. And O oh Allah, we ask you that you protect us from the sihr of the people who do sihr. And O oh Allah, we ask you that you protect us from all falls, all forms of hasad uh, and takabur. And O oh Allah, we ask you that you grant us ikhlasun niyyah. O oh Allah, we ask you, I am sat here speaking, these brothers are sat here listening, O oh Allah, allow us to purify our intentions. O oh Allah, allow our intentions to be only for the sake of Allah and His beloved Habib. O oh Allah, allow us to attain your rida in the dunya and in the akhirah. And O oh Allah, when the final stages come and we do leave this world, which we all will leave this world, when it will be, we don't know. O oh Allah, we are running around like headless chickens. The Quran says, Fa'ayna tazhabun. Where are you going? What are you doing with your lives? Ya Allah, we are confused and we need your help. O oh Allah, guide us to the path of sirat e mustaqim And O oh Allah, when we take our final breaths, allow us to utter the words, La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. O oh Allah, throughout the month of Ramadan and even prior to the month of Ramadan, ever since the establishment of this masjid, those brothers, those sisters, those uncles, those aunties that have done anything 
whether it's a financial contribution or walking around collecting donations or giving time to the masjid, whatever they have done in facilitating this masjid for us today, we are sat here enjoying the luxuries of this masjid. Oh Allah, the hard work, effort, determination, strength and blood and sweat of those people that have allowed this masjid to come in its existence. Oh Allah, shower your mercy and blessings upon them. O oh Allah, if they have left this world, grant them a high rank in Jannah. And O oh Allah, if they are alive, grant them a, high, a healthy and a pious life and allow them to leave the dunya with ease. Ya Allah, what we have asked you for, grant it to us. And Ya Allah, what we have not asked you for, which is of benefit to us, O oh Allah, grant that to us also. Allahumma innaka kareemun tuhibbul afwa fa'fu anna ya ghafuru, ya ghafuru, ya ghafur. Allahumma a'inna ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa khusni ibadatik Allahumma ya muqallib al-qulub sabbit qalbi ala dinik Allahumma ya muqallib al-qulub sabbit qalbi ala dinik you should always say this with me ya muqallib al-qulub sabbit qalbi ala dinik O oh, changer of the states of the heart keep my heart firm on your religion O oh, Allah protect our iman O oh, Allah protect our iman O oh, Allah grant us iman and oh Allah grant it istiqama upon iman. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun. Wa salamu ala al-mursaleen. Wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Aqulu kawli hada. Wa astaghfirullaha li wa lakum wa ma tawfiki illa billah. Wa akhiru da'wana ala alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Jazakallahu khairah.